Hey there, this is Paul 1PA, and welcome to all the fellow RC enthusiasts out there. This is my Hirobo Quark 4 channel helicopter. Now this design is renowned as being the best fixed pitch micro on the market today. And I have to agree with that assessment because I've gotten 50 flights on this so far. It's got tons of inherent performance, really a hoop to fly, and it's been perfectly reliable. And uh, consequently, since it is so good out of the box, there's not a lot of upgrades you need to do to it. However, I have heard a lot of good things about the new precision uh, drive staff assembly that utilizes a dual bearing setup. So, uh, Robo is actually making these available now to the public. So I went ahead and purchased one. And since there seems to be a lot of questions about how do you install this, how is it different from the stock uh, drive shaft, and lastly, what sort of performance gain should you expect? Figured I'd do a short video that will hopefully answer all your questions. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get that old drive shaft out of there. So begin by uh, removing the tail rotor. So just grasp the center plastic portion. Wiggle that outward and it will snap off. There we go. And then you need to remove this tail fin as well. There's just two screws, hold that in place. Got one underneath there. And one above. Now these screws are very tiny, so I recommend you put them in a container so you don't lose them. And then just pull straight outwards. And voila, the tail fin's gone. Next, on the tail unit itself, there are four screws in a rectangular pattern here. I'm going to remove all those. Also, there's a fist screw all the way at the back. So get all five of those out there, and we'll take it from there. Now that all the screws have been removed from the tail assembly, we can take it apart. This is actually a two-piece clamshell type design. So I'm just going to carefully separate it here. There's one half. And here's the second half. From there, I can remove the stock shaft drive, pulling it straight out of the boom. Okay, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two drive shafts. The stock one is shown on the bottom here, and this is the precision version on top. Overall, they look very similar, but as you can see, this has an added bearing in the center of the shaft. That bearing also has a rubber sheath that goes around the outside, so it takes up any slot when you insert it into the tail boom of the helicopter. Also worth mentioning is the pin drive on the motor end. This is aluminum instead of plastic. And also it's anodized a nice blue color. So that's another nice upgrade on this precision shaft. Now prior to actually installing my upgraded drive shaft, I chose to take two optional steps. First I got some high quality synthetic oil. And I'm just going to put a a single drop onto each bearing on the drive shaft. In addition, this tail assembly also has a pair of bearings in it. Very tiny buggers for the tail rotor. I'm going to do the same thing there. This one that has the gear, you'll note it has some lateral play in it. If you push it to the one side, you can expose that bearing. There it is. And go ahead and Put a drop of oil there too. Again, this probably isn't absolutely necessary. I just want to be sure these are adequately lubricated and are going to last a long time. And while you got the helicopter apart, why not? Second step I like to do is take some dry silicon spray. I like the CRC brand. And I got a cotton swab here with an extension. I'll saturate that cotton swab with the silicon. And go ahead and coat this rubber sheath on this center bearing. Just sort of paint that on there. Same deal on the tail boom. I'll actually run this swab up inside. Okay? And this will just cut down on the friction when you install that, prevent that rubber from shattering or possibly getting torn, what have you. So it's probably a good idea to do. Now to install this shaft, you want to take the end with a pin and insert that into the boom first. Kind of wiggle that rubber portion in there. Okay. And the trick is, you want that pin to engage in the slots on the tail motor. So you can see as I push it in here, bam, it stopped right there, but obviously that isn't fully seated. So what I need to do is 
slowly rotate this shaft while I'm pushing in and get it to index. There we go. So you can see now, I am definitely fully seated since that bearing is contacting the end of the boom. Now the next step is to put the tail assembly back into place. And that's probably the trickiest part of this whole procedure. Uh, if you notice in here inside the plastic, there's actually grooves that are molded in. And those recesses have to conform to the bearing on the back here. And for that to happen, I have to pull out this shaft just slightly. In fact, you want about a millimeter gap between the bearing and the tail boom. Also, as I mentioned before, this has lateral play in it. I like to push it all the way in since that crown gear has to go on the left side of this gear on the uh, shaft drive. So again, gear on the proper side, bearing in the groove, looking good. Now I get the opposite half and uh, put that in place as well. There we go. Now I'm just going to pinch this temporarily and just spin this. And it looks to me like the gears are meshing properly, feels very smooth, so we're ready to proceed. So just go ahead and put in these four screws, again in that rectangular pattern, and don't forget the fifth one on the back. Okay, just two more steps to finish up the assembly of the quark. First thing would be to reinstall the uh, tail fin. And what you want to make note of here, on this left, left plastic portion of the tail housing, there's a hole molded in the center. That hole has to line up with the corresponding one, the aluminum tail boom. Okay? If you note on the tail assembly, there's a uh, pin projecting out. You want that pin to go into those holes. And what's important about this is, this will fix the, the plane of rotation for the tail rotor. Okay? Now even though these screws are cinched down, if it's not lined up, you can rotate this a few degrees either way as needed. But sometimes I'll even take a flashlight shine it in there, and right now I'm looking at the carbon drive shaft, so I know for sure those holes are lined up. So we'll go ahead and press that pin into place, like so. And the last thing you'll do for this tail fin is just go ahead and install your final two screws. And to wrap things up, we'll install our tail rotor blade. Just snap that in place. And that's it. To wrap things up, I just want to touch on some of the benefits you should see with a double bearing drive shaft. Thanks to the added bearing support in the center of the boom area, any inherent vibration or runout that's present in the drive shaft will be minimized substantially. Also, the tail rotor gears themselves are now going to mesh in a more precise fashion, and this will eliminate some of the noise that can develop in the tail rotor of the quark. I think the biggest benefit you're going to see of the double bearing setup is in long-term durability. I mean, if you fly a lot, obviously the single bearing setup is going to develop slop prematurely. This, in turn, will add more vibration to the helicopter, which is going to be a detriment to your flight characteristics. It will also increase the friction, which will cut down on your runtime. So again, the double bearing should eliminate a lot of those negatives. If you own a Quark, you already got a great heli, now you can make it even better with this simple upgrade. So I hope this video proved beneficial, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have.